from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Speaking with the Enemy. Well, we're still about 30 minutes away from kickoff here at a beautiful Thanksgiving afternoon at Tim Hortons Field. Thanks for taking some of your. Uh, <laughs> we see. Well, he's a tilde. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, we're getting set here. Thank you for making us part of your uh, Thanksgiving Day plans. Very pleased now to be speaking with the enemy. That's Mike Hogan. He's the radio voice of the Toronto Argonauts. Hoagie, how was your drive from Toronto? It's. Uh, I, I hope. I hope you got stuck in traffic, my friend. No, it was fine. I don't know you're going with the enemy thing. I get it. Like, can't we live in peace and just say go Red Blacks right now? <laughs> like, can we all can we all get along on that one at least? That's true. It's, it's it's a close game going on in Montreal right now. But let's talk about this one because the Tie Cats. This is a big game for the uh, for the Tie Cats. They want to keep pace with the Argos. What what are you expecting to see from an Argos team that's on a, a real quick turnaround between games? Yeah, it's you know it just it's just to continue to get better, right? A little more consistency from the offense and a little tighter on the O line. Coach Dinwiddie really didn't like what he saw offensively, and he did not mince words uh, when he was doing the Zoom conference media uh, event after the game. And he basically ripped a lot of the guys on offense. He said Mac was okay, and he mentioned a couple of other receivers, but he didn't mince words. He was not happy with the offensive production. So uh, I'm sure he got their attention this week. When you, you talked about Mac, that's McLeod Bethel Thompson. There, there was some question about you know who was going to get this start because Nick Arbuckle's back in the lineup. What have you seen from uh, Bethel Thompson uh, this season? You know, he, he seems like he's someone who's just like he's right on the cusp of uh, you know being one of the great quarterbacks in the CFL right now. The only thing is just, and I don't know how much of this is on him, but it's just the, the consistent results, right? I mean, you know, he's he goes off often for uh, for big passing games and. You know, I put, I put a stat together for the media notes where, you know, he started 25 CFL games. He's thrown for over 300 yards in 12 of them. And in two more, he was at 295 and 296. So over half of his start, he's, he's flirted with or thrown for over 300 yards. So, like, he's got a great arm. He, he puts a lot of velocity on the football. And, you know, this year, the only interception he's thrown was on a two-point conversion attempt last year, and that's a, or last week, and that's against seven touchdowns. So... There's a lot to like about McLeod Bethel Thompson, and uh, you know I, I don't think this is a bad matchup for him uh, in terms of what what uh, Hamilton likes to do schematically. Uh, it might have been a little bit tougher for Nick than it would be for Mac, and, and conversely, I think there are teams that Nick matches up better against than Hamilton. Hey, Mike, it's uh, Rob Hitchcock here. How are you? Uh, I, I still have a, a sore hip, and that's just from me watching you hit, guys. <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. It, you hit the nail on the head earlier when you said a little bit of the consistency. Um, I, I've seen that, you know, not just with Toronto, but even with, with Hamilton as well. Uh, there just doesn't seem like a lot of sense of urgency, you know, coming out of the start, coming out of the gates on, on both sides, on both teams. You know, you look at Toronto at 5-3 and, three and, and, and Hamilton at 4-4, four and four, and it's hard for me to believe that Toronto's five and three looking at some of the games that they played, but they've just found a way to win. It's, it's, it's bizarre sometimes when I'm thinking about it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think the scoreboard has been kind to the visitors in some cases in the games in Toronto, like the Winnipeg game was close on the board, but when you look at the, you look at the difference in, in offense, that game it was like two or four fifty to two fifty. Like it was, they really had their number and, you know, it, it could be even better. The three games they've lost this year have all been on the road, and they've been in Hamilton, Winnipeg, and Saskatchewan. And hits you played. Like, are those the three toughest buildings in the league to play in right now? Yeah, it seems like it, doesn't it? That's for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's just getting through that. And, uh, you know, there were, I think, 75 new guys on the roster in training camp. So, without exhibition games, it took them a while to get going. And I think they're starting to find their stride now, especially on defense. Uh, this team uh, has been a little bit susceptible to, to runs up a gap with the big power type. Uh, but man, if, if that's the only Achilles heel, uh, especially when Enoch Mwamba comes back, that's uh, it's, it's a pretty good looking unit defensively. And now it's just the offense trying to play catch up. You mentioned the defense. They scored three touchdowns on defense <laughs> last week, two interceptions and a fumble recovery after a block kick. First time since 2000 against Hamilton, they had three defensive touchdowns. Is that, it, is that the Chris Jones effect? I mean, he's only been there a couple of weeks, but that's a, that's a pretty big result. It's it's interesting to watch this because right now it's it's kind of the Glenn Young defense 
where Chris Jones is putting his input on it up front and Rich Stubler is putting his input in the back. So you've got this kind of hybrid defense where you've got some pressure coming up in a bend, bend, uh, with a bend, don't break attitude in the secondary. So, um, you know, what Jones loves are those, you know, those, those guys with length to get their hands up and, uh, it, it's been fun. Jones is calling the plays, and like I say, he's only been here since. Well, it's, I guess it's all uh, not even a month yet. Um, so he's been, yeah, it's been like two, two and a half weeks. Um, it's by the time this defense rolls around, it takes what it has, and then Jones is able to put his thumbprint on things. I think this is going to be a really fun defense to watch by playoff time. Yeah, I agree, um, and I can say the same thing for, for Hamilton and, and their defense, the way they've yeah. played this year. Um, let's hope it's not going to be a, such a defensive battle, and let's get some points scored on the and get these offenses scoring some points. I'm sorry, these, uh... didn't you play defense? Like, can't they kick you out of the DB's union for saying stuff like that? You know don't, don't you want, like, 3 nothing? Yeah, well, the three nothing's great. I love playing in those games, but keep. It, but we're on the field too much. We don't want to be on the field that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hoagie, you mentioned the Argos uh, struggles on the road. Uh, they are two and twenty in their last twenty-two games away from BMO Field. What do you attribute their struggles on the road to in the last couple of seasons here? This year specifically, and like I, I don't even want to think about the two years prior to this. It's just, it's, I'm trying. You guys are bringing back like flashbacks, <laughs> and I'm going to start twitching halfway through the quarter. <laughs> uh, but, but this year it's been discipline. Um, it, there's really a difference in penalties. It's, it's, it's. I think 20 in the same number of games. They're four and four home and road. I think it's like uh, 23 penalties at home and 46 at home. So they double up at, uh, on the road. Sorry, 46 on the road. So they double up on the road. Um, is and, and you know I talked to Declan Cross uh, for an article I wrote for Argonauts.ca, and he said that the one thing they want to do and they're really going to try and pay attention to this game is they don't want to take the bait. You know, Hamilton's really good at getting guys off their game, and there are one or two guys on the Ticats who like to talk during the game, um, and they just they, they just don't want to take the bait. Like, if Simone's out there trying to goad them, and he's really good at that, it's, it's, it's up to the Argos to not, you know, give him the satisfaction of seeing a, a little piece of laundry on the field and go back to the defensive huddle and start laughing at the idiot who took the penalty. Um, that's that's a key. And if they, can, if they can play disciplined, especially in terms of penalties, I think this is going to be a much better team. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that's very, very correctable. And if they can do it, they'll be a much better team. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, quick question. You've been around the league for, for many, many years. And... When you look you at just called me old. Yeah. Like, that's what you did. Like, you just, with your outside voice. <laughs> you are old, but I'm old, too. I'm 51 yeah, this yeah. month. But we, uh, do you, have you noticed, like, when you look across the league and you see the, the O'Shea's and the Orlando Steinhardt and Dinwiddie's and these, these young coaches that just kind of came out of the game, you know, a few years back, and, and they're just bringing, like, this, this new style in. And, and mind you, I talked to, to, to Bob Young about this earlier. Uh, I said, you know, we had Don Southern and Ronnie Lancaster and those old school coaches that brought that smash mouth mentality football into, uh, and that's the way, that's all we knew back then. But I do find now with, are the, are the players now more buying into the younger, the younger style and just the way that these guys are, are, are approaching the game now? I think it helps, especially when you've got, you know, well, especially with Stein and, uh, and Osh. I mean, you look at, the, at their CVs, you know, Ryan played in the league, but he, you know, he didn't have a Hall of Fame career like the other two guys did. But, uh, you know, these guys are buying what, what, what Ryan's selling because they see how dedicated he is and how passionate he is and how hard he's been working. And they, they, they really buy into what he's selling. And not every young coach can pull that off. Yeah. Um, you know, here, here's a guy that, you know, only had a, a, a brief stint as a coordinator. He's a positional coach. So that, I thought, was going to be uh, a bit trying for him to, to win over this team filled with veterans. And boy, he's, he's, he did that first week of camp. So uh, they love what he's selling, and they they love the coaching staff working with him. And so far, so good for Dinwiddie. And you know, he's, he's every once in a while you kind of go, "Why did he do that?" And then you know, I'll ask him after the game why he did something like that. And he's got a really valid explanation. It's not like he's thinking off the cuff, but he's he's got some things that uh, that he likes to do that uh, that some fans won't like, especially you know, third and short. He's He's going to be a little more conservative than most, but um, in other aspects, he's, he's pretty wide open. So it's it's interesting. And, you know, uh, if, if he can get to the point where he's mentioned in the same sentence in terms of success, 
as as Orlando and Mike. I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, I agree. If if you kind of mentioned it, they got to stay disciplined. But the Toronto Argonauts will win this game if they stay disciplined and do, do just treat the football as your friend. <laughs> You know, don't let somebody like Rob Hitchcock go and knock it out of your hands. Um, you know, just that's been that's been a big problem. It's just just keeping the ball in their position. Um, you know, even a bad fumble on a on a return last week against Ottawa could have let the Red Blacks back in the game. And it just that stuff can't happen. Uh, McLeod McLeod's been really good at at protecting the football in terms of picks. Like I said, he only has the one. But they just put the ball on the field way too much. And, and that's the, the, the thing that I'm concerned about the most here, turnovers. And, you know, the other thing I'll say quickly, big plays. We mentioned on Labor Day, Louis, I said the team that makes big, most big plays win. I'll probably go with that same prediction today. Yeah, and I, I do have to correct you. I never went for the ball. I always went for their heads. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, that's that, you. You're a little low. That's why I got the sore hip. That's right. <laughs> uh, one more set I'll throw at you, Hoagie. The uh, you mentioned turnovers. Toronto plus eight in the turnover ratio. Hamilton yeah. minus seven. So that's a big number and obviously something to watch. Hoagie, appreciate you uh, connecting. Have a great call in today's game. You guys too. Thanks so much. Speaking with the enemy. Dropping twice weekly before every Ticats game. Like and subscribe to get inside the enemy's head.